next fun fact is that even if you take half a liter of alcohol, half a liter of water and you mix them together, you still won't get a solution that is completely one liters. It will be less than one liter. Now, why is that you might ask? That is because when you mix alcohol and water, they form, you know, they, they bond with each other through extensive hydrogen bonding. The hydrogen bonding between them is so strong that the crystal lattice that they form with each other is packed so closely that it becomes very, very dense. And since density is very high, volume becomes very low. And if volume is low, then it can't be completely one liters. That's your fun fact for today. We are going to be learning something similar to this, but uh, something completely different as well. Today we are going to be beginning with colligative properties. We left our last video at the end with Raoul's, we're ending with Raoul's law. And uh, today we are going to be discussing colligative properties. Now, colligative properties basically means that for an ideal solution, we discuss some properties that depend upon the number of solute particles in that solution. Okay, in total, there are four colligative properties that we have learned about. The first one is relative lowering of vapor pressure which we or you might also know as Raoult's law for non-volatile, uh, you know, a solution of non-volatile components. Then there is elevation and boiling point where we learn something called the ebullioscopic uh, constant or the cryoscopic constant. Uh, then there is uh, freezing of, uh, you know, depression and freezing point where we learn something about you know, cryoscopic constant, sorry, I talked about it in the elevation of boiling point. And then we talked about osmotic pressure. Okay, so let's go through these one by one. And uh, this topic is important from the numerical point of view because every single formula related to these four properties is used in while solving, uh, solving numericals and majority of the numericals come from colligative properties. Okay. So, the first colligative property is Raoult's law for non volatile, uh, a solution of non volatile components and uh, or relative lowering of vapor pressure. So, what does relative lowering of vapor pressure mean? If the solute, if there is a binary solution, two component solution, if the solute is non volatile, we have been using this term volatile and non volatile for a while now. We used it in the last video as well. If you don't know what volatile means, volatile basically means the property or the, uh, you know, characteristic of a substance that makes it uh, vaporize or evaporate rapidly. This can happen with or without heating. So that is the volatility. So if a volatile substance is there, it means that it can evaporate rapidly or vaporize rapidly and exist in the vapor phase, while a non-volatile substance does not evaporate rapidly. That is the difference between volatile and non-volatile. So, huh, we were talking about uh, volatile, uh, non-volatile components and relative lowering of vapor pressure. So, in a binary uh, solution, if the solute is non-volatile and the solvent is volatile, so when you mix these two and when you create a solution, then the total uh, vapor pressure of that solution is relatively lower than that expected of a volatile component. Okay. So that is what uh, basically <clears throat> it is about. Okay, so if we look through the NCRT, there is something I'd like to read out, which basically will explain what I have said right now. If we were to, uh, if you were to open your NCRTs on page number 46, then there is this statement in paragraph number 2. In a pure liquid, the entire surface is occupied by the molecules of the liquid. If a non-volatile solute is added to the solvent to give a solution, the vapor pressure of the so solution is solely from the solvent alone. What this means is that for a sol binary solution of a non-volatile solute and volatile uh, solvent, the partial vapor pressure of the uh, solution completely depends on the solvent itself. This is because it is volatile. It can evaporate rapidly while the solute cannot. So there is no point of talking about the partial pressure of the solute. So, if you were to add a non-volatile solute to a solution, uh, to a uh, volatile solvent, then that would just lower the vapor pressure. That is what low, uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure speaks about. Okay, so there is a formula for this. Okay, 
the relative lowering of vapor pressure the formula for that is okay let's see p not small p not minus ps which is the uh, pressure of the solute upon p not equals to the mole fraction okay so that is the formula for relative lowering of vapor pressure or you can say if if you write it as mole fraction and there is the second component the second component the second component which is your solute so the mole fraction of the second or you can write it as n2 upon n1 plus n2 that is the basic formula for relative lowering of vapor pressure now again n2 and n1 this can be written as n2 can be written as w2 by m2 upon w1 by m1 plus w2 by m2 right this can be written for that as well <clears throat> or you can also write it as n2 plus n2 upon n1 right and then that again becomes w2 upon m2 upon w1 upon m1 that is all relative lowering of vapor pressure is about oh right this formula which where we deal with only one component that is for a dilute solution dilute means the concentration of the solute is so low that it does not matter that much in the total uh, solution okay so <clears throat> over here right yeah over here this is our partial vapor pressure of the solvent this is partial vapor pressure of the solute and this is again partial vapor pressure of the solvent or a solution this in this w2 is our given mass or the mass that we're using right this is our molecular mass of the substance that we're using this is the molecular uh, you know given mass of the solvent and this is the molecular mass of the solvent right so that is all what relative lowering of vapor pressure is about. Okay. Now that we've talked about it, let's move on to our elevation in boiling point. Now, what does elevation in boiling point mean? Elevation in boiling point basically talks about how the boiling point of boiling point. Now, what is boiling point? The temperature at which a substance moves from its uh, liquid phase or solid phase to gaseous phase right so that is the boiling point of the thing and boiling point is getting increased or from the original it is getting moved to a higher point this happens because the boiling point of a solution is always greater than boiling point of pure solvent now if you take an example of an aqueous solution of sucrose then for that you need to exceed a pressure of at least 1.013 bar for the solution to boil so while for pure sucrose, it is less, right? At 1.013 bar, which is the standard condition for pressure at room temperature uh, at 100 degrees Celsius, an aqueous solution of sucrose has less vapor pressure, which, you know, vapor pressure which is less than 1.013 bar. Now, for the solution to be boiled, we need to increase the pressure. And for that, we have to increase the temperature. Oh, sorry. Uh, for that we have to keep boiling it right if we keep boiling it then only we'll reach its boiling point so if ha if it has to exceed 1.013 bar then we keep boiling it boiling it boiling it or heating it basically providing heat to it until it reaches a certain amount of temperature which is its boiling temperature so basically the boiling uh, point of the solution is always higher than the uh, boiling point of pure solvent okay now as it says, it is a colligate property and it also depends upon the number of solute particles. Now, what is the formula for this? <clears throat> the, we represent the change in boiling point or the difference in boiling or the original boiling point and the increased boiling point by delta Eb. Okay. And that is directly proportional to small m. From the previous videos, let's, uh, let us revise what does small m mean. It means molarity. Molarity, right? So, after we remove the proportionality sign, we get delta Tb is equals to Kbm. Okay, here Kb is our ebulloscopic constant or molar elevation constant, right? And the value for it is generally given in your questions. Okay, so after we say this, if 
we are talking about molarity, then there can be various number of formulas that can be created from this single formula alone. Okay, so let us talk about those formulas first because those formulas are actually the ones that we are going to be using for our numericals. Right, so delta TB is equal to KBM. This is our ebullioscopic constant. Okay, now Molarity M is equals to number of moles of solute N upon mass of solvent in kg. Right? That was the formula for molarity. Right? Now, if we were to put this in simpler terms then m is equals to w upon m upon uh, w1 upon m1 and upon let's say w2 by 1000 right this is would be a formula for the molarity over here because our solvent should, is present in liters so it has to be divided by 1000 however much mass of sorry, our solvent is present in kg and for however much mass we are given we have to divide it by we will have to divide it by 1000 right so if we were to write it after this then our formula would sort of become like this w1 into 1000 upon w2 into m1 right simple mathematics then, if we put the formula of M in this particular formula, then we get delta TB is equals to KB into W2 into 1000 upon W1 into M. Sorry, W1 into capital M1. Okay. Here, KB is our ebullioscopic constant, delta DB is our change in boiling point, W2 is the given mass of solvent, so, solute, this is 1000 because we talk about kg over here, W1 is the mass of solvent and M1 is, sorry, M2, M2 is the molecular mass of our solute, okay, so that is what elevation and boiling point is all about. This is one of the most main formulas you need to keep in mind because through this formula you may have to find out the value of KB, you may have to find the value of W2, you may have to find the value of W1 or even the, uh, <laughs> the value of M2 given that all other values are given to you. Okay and uh, even if all va values are not given to you directly, indirectly through one or the other way they will be giving you the values for the question. Keep in mind. Now. Let us move on to our third colligative property that is depression and freezing point. Okay, freezing point of a substance is where the vapor pressure goes, uh, you know, <clears throat> vapor pressure of the substance in its, in its liquid phase is equal to the vapor pressure of the substance in its solid phase. Okay, now uh, <clears throat> this applies the same logic as uh, elevation of boiling point that is where our freezing temperature is lowered. Uh, we will get directly to the formula of this thing. We Both the formulas are very very similar. Here we represent it as delta Tf equals to Kfm molarity again over here. And this is called a cryoscopic or molar depression constant. Okay, cryoscopic constant. Okay, similar to how we derive the formula for elevation of boiling point, delta Tf is equals to Kf into W2 into 1000 upon W1 into M2. Okay, that uh, is all about, there is not much about this um, depression and freezing point. Yes, one of the most common and one of the most favorite questions of the board regarding this topic is uh, why do we use ethylene glycol in poor countries? You know, in car radiators, ethylene glycol is basically an antifreeze agent, and we use it 
uh, to lower the freezing point of water which is present in the car radiators so in cold countries where there is a chance of water getting frozen uh, it actually lowers the uh, freezing point of water so it remains in its liquid phase okay similarly they can ask you why salt is used on icy roads okay in cold places people also use salt they spread salt over uh, icy uh, and slippery areas so that the ice melts okay when you put salt on ice the ice melts that is because salt lowers the freezing point of water so this is one of the one of the two examples that they usually ask if a reasoning comes a reasoning question comes from this part the next colligative property is osmotic pressure okay now before we define osmotic pressure let us first talk about what osmosis is now um, in previous classes you might have learned about osmosis being the uh, process of flow of particles from higher concentration to a lower concentration through a semi permeable membrane similarly over here osmosis is the flow of solvent particles to solution side from the solvent side to the solution side through a semi permeable membrane when external pressure is applied okay so that is all about osmotic uh, uh, that is what osmotic pressure is or that is the, what the process of osmosis is now uh, if you were to define osmotic pressure then the exact amount of pressure that stops the flow of solvent from the solvent side to the solution side that is called osmotic pressure now osmotic pressure is denoted by pi it is denoted by that very fancy pi not the pi you write like this in math it is denoted by a very fancy pi that you can see in your <laughs> ncrt books and uh, it is proportional to molarity of a substance now there is a difference between osmotic pressure and uh, other properties because osmotic pr pressure relies on molarity the importance of this uh, difference basically is that since they talk about molarity and molarity is temperature dependent so this uh, you know method of osmotic pressure can be used to uh, you know determine the molar mass of particularly small particles at room temperature that enables us to uh, measure the molar mass of say let's say macroscopic protein molecules etc at higher temperatures okay now after that we come to something called hypertonic hypotonic and isotonic solutions <clears throat> two solutions which have the same osmotic pressure at a certain temperature are called isotonic solutions okay then if a solution is having a lower vapor pressure than another is called a hypotonic solution and a solution having a greater vapor pressure with respect to another solution is called a hypotonic solution uh let's say if we were to talk about hypotonic and hypertonic solutions then a solution of salt you know with a with uh, with respect to our rbcs if a solution of salt is less than 0.9% then it is a hypotonic solution if it is greater than 0.9% then it is a hypertonic solution and if it is equal to 0.9% then it is an isotonic solution okay one of the most favorite questions of the board from this part one is edema what is edema is and the second one is what would happen to a blood cell if it was kept in hypotonic solution what would happen if it was kept in a hypertonic solution these are common questions that the board asks and all of these questions are given in your ncrt if you read them okay uh what edema is i'll tell you because uh, it is something you might have experienced in your daily life suppose you go to a marriage okay and then you eat a lot of food because everything over there is very 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 yummy okay and you eat a lot of food and then you come back home after a you, you know whole night of dancing and having fun and then you come back home and you sleep and you wake up and then you go and look at yourself in a mirror and you look like a panda because all your entire face is swollen it's happened to me so i know how it feels like but don't worry it's just nothing there there is nothing to it just because there is a lot of salt concentration in your body your body is retaining water 
and if it's retaining water then it your skins your skin cells and your cells uh, you know on your face they swell up because they have a lot of water in them it goes down after you drink water and you decrease the concentration of salt in your body so that is what edema is the swelling or the puffiness of skin due to you know having a lot of nacl concentration another thing uh suppose you have a very very sore throat and you're going ha <laughs> ha every day and then you go to the doctor and the doctor is like you should do saline gargles but you don't do them because you're a lazy ass person okay you should do them because when you do saline gargles then <clears throat> when they pass through your throat there is inflammation in your throat because there is water you know uh, accumulated over there so when you pass saline water through your throat then what happens is since then the salt concentration increases over here then solvent which is water it flows out from your cells out into the you know uh, not basically blood stream but it flows out of your cells decreasing the swelling and decreasing the irritation so from next time do your saline gargles i'll also do them that is all about osmotic pressure okay let's move on to reverse osmosis or, or ro as you like to call it because that is what you see in your homes what ro basically is is when osmotic pressure on the solvents or you know on a system increases the pressure which is inside it increases it which it exceeds the osmotic pressure and that pressure is applied to a system then instead of the solvent flowing from solvent to solution side the solvent actually flows out from the solution side to the solvent side and that gives us basically solute is left on the other hand now this is very very uh, useful in doing desalination of sea water because pure solvent flows out and you the salt is left on one side and pure water is on the other side so that helps okay that is what ro is about and uh, there are uh, a few you know semi permeable membranes that you can talk about one is the cellulose acetate membrane okay it is permeable to water <clears throat> but impermeable to impurities okay then another uh, very you know very let's say common semi permeable membrane is actually your cell membrane the membrane that surrounds your cells inside your body is actually a very good semi permeable membrane that is how your blood cells uh, you know shrink or swell according to the situation so that is all for today now for the next video i'll be doing some questions from this chapter which are very very important have appeared in the board uh, you know sometimes that is all for today tata -da! as you can see i have upgraded to a duster this time